Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Robert RN here, and today's video was suggested in the comments of my last video. I want to remind you to go ahead and leave comments and suggestions in the comment section. Let me know what you want to see next. Testosterone RN writes, What should I consider having as an emergency preparedness box slash bag slash crate? And what does the CDC recommend I have stored up? As an RN, what else might you suggest over and above what the CDC slash government recommends? That's a very good question, testosterone RN, and I'm glad you asked. First of all, I want to go ahead and state, we've seen over and over again that we should be prepared to, ha to have to survive without the basic amenities that we're used to. We should no longer think in terms of, am I ready if this happens? Rather, we should think in terms of, am I ready when this happens? We've seen this with Katrina and several other ca calamities. And that's why it's so surprising to know that according to the CDC, 48% of Americans do not have emergency supplies. That's almost half of the country does not have emergency, emergency supplies in case of an emergency. That's a scary, scary number. Now, it's important to prepare emergency supplies at your work, at your home, and in your vehicle because emergencies can happen anywhere and you need to be prepared no matter where you are. So let's jump into this uh, supply kit. The CDC recommends that you keep three days worth of water and it's one gallon per day per person um, on hand. Now, a normal active person needs to drink a minimum of half a gallon of water per day. That's a minimum. If you're a child, you're a pregnant woman, or if you're sick, or if you live in a hot climate like I do. I live in Texas. It's hot down here. We need to drink about as much almost as much as a gallon sometimes that doesn't leave very much for bathing for maintaining hygiene or anything like that so the minimum is one gallon per day now you have several options you can do the best choice which is to go out and buy an Ozarka bottle case of water the 28 pack um, or any kind of unopened prepackaged bottles do not open those containers till you're ready to use them. Also, it's important to periodically check the expiration dates. Yes, water does expire. Uh, you need to check those expiration dates on those store-bought bottles throughout the year and replace them as needed. The 28-pack of half-liter Ozarka bottles it comes out equaling about a gallon and a half, a little less. So that's enough for one person for one day. You need to keep three of those per person according to the CDC, to have the three-day supply. Now, again, that is bare minimum for drinking water. That You need to include any water you're going to use for cooking or for meals, for bathing, anything like that. Drinking water is what it's talking about. The next best choice is to fill your own food-grade containers. I emphasize food-grade. Make sure that they are good to handle food. I'll be going into what, what kind of containers you should and shouldn't be using. But you can use those large ones you find in the surplus or camping supply stores, or you can use those empty 2-liter sodas. Now, always completely clean those bottles before using them. You want to limit the amount of bacteria that goes into them. To clean them, you need to wash the containers with dishwashing soap, and then rinse it. Then mix 1 teaspoon of household bleach with 1 quart of water. Make sure to swish it all around so it covers all the inside surfaces. Then rinse it again with clean water. Then you're good to use it. It's important to not use containers that have ever held anything poisonous. Make sure that whatever container you choose does not easily break, so don't get any glass ones. Also, make sure that the containers have a tight seal. If they don't have a tight seal, you're leaving it open to air. Anything can get, it, can get in there. Don't use containers that can easily break down over time, like milk jugs. Or also like milk jugs, don't use any containers that can be hard to clean. You know, especially with that handle in the milk jug, it gets kind of hard to get anything in there to make sure it's completely clean. Store all water in a cool, dark place in your home, office, or car. And be sure to replace it, if you're packing your own water, replace it every six months. Now, with that water, do not ration it. Be sure to drink what you need and look for more water later. Dehydration is a serious thing. It actually can change the way your um, your electrolytes are all balanced 
And if you're messing with sodium, it changes the way your brain works. If you're messing with potassium, it messes with your heart. There's several things that can go wrong when you're not drinking sufficient amount of water. Now, I'm going to add to this. I'm going to say that the CDC recommendation of three days is not enough. When Katrina hit, it took six days for the people living in New Orleans and trapped in that convention center to leave. Six days. The three days would not have been enough. So I would suggest keep a week's worth of food, of water, of anything you need. Keep one week's worth at minimum so that that way you don't need to worry about whether or not people will get to you. Now, if you're planning to bug out or to go somewhere else, three days would be enough to get you to where you're going, but you need a bigger supply where you're going. If you want to just store three days, that's fine, but you need to be sure to have some way to get more drinking water. Boiling water works pretty good, but there's other ways to do it as well. And um, I would definitely look online to see what all are the different ways to prepare water to drink. One, life straw. Awesome invention. I'm glad that somebody invented it. Whoever did this is a genius. It's basically a carb carbon filter that you can use, and it's more than that, but essentially, it, it's a great way to filter water if you need to. Now, again, only in case of emergency to use this. Preferably, you have some clean drinking water that you can use. Next, iodine tablets. I don't have any with me to show you, but you can get them at Walmart or anywhere. Just carry some iodine tablets. What that does is it any bacteria that are there, bacteria, not viruses, what it does is it shrivels up the bacteria. You need to be sure that if you choose to do this or the iodine tablets, you have some form of collection uh, to collect any rainwater or anything like that. Collect the water that you need. Also, be sure to boil the water. That's a good way to kill bacteria and denature those capsules that are around the viruses. Um, those are made of protein. They can be denatured somewhat, somewhat with uh, heat. Also, the DNA or RNA inside the viruses will be denatured uh, with that heat. Now we go to food. Again, CDC suggests that you store three days worth of food. Now, with this food, remember that an average man needs about 2,500 calories per day. And the average woman needs about 2,000. Now, these are averages. You need to take into account your body size, your activity, and your me uh, metabolic rate. So some people may need a lot more than that. In fact, most people, if you're going having to bug out or to run and to be or do anything extraneous, you're going to need more than those calories. So keep in mind when you're storing food that you need that many calories per day. Now, also, it's important to store food that are easy to make and that can last a long time without being refrigerated. Pick items that are high in calories and at the same time nutritious. You want to be careful with carbs because they're high in calories but don't have a lot of nutrition to it. Be sure that you have a balanced nutrition even in your emergency food. Try to make familiar foods when possible to help lift the spirits of those around you. Also, plan ahead for those special diets. That includes people with food allergies or food intolerances, babies or the elderly. Be sure to keep food that they can eat as well. So here's a few suggestions for the food. These foods last about six months. They're boxed potatoes, dried fruit, dry crisp crackers, and powdered milk. If you want something that lasts a little longer, about a year, you can do canned foods like soups, fruits, or vegetables, canned fruit juices, canned nuts, peanut butter and jelly, or ready-to-eat cereals and uncooked instant cereals. If you can store things properly, these next foods can last for years. Bouillon products, seasoning packets, dried corn, dry pasta, instant coffee, tea or cocoa, and rice. Now, it's important to take care of your food supply. Keep food in a dry, cool spot. If possible, choose an area out of the sun. Also, check your expiration date on your food supply. Make sure that every six months that you're replacing the foods that are expired or that you keep an eye on those that are close to being expired and go ahead and eat those. You don't want that to go to waste. Here's an important note. Immediately throw away any canned goods that look swollen, dented, or rusty. They may have germs in them that make you sick even if you cook them. Now, you only want to eat safe food, so eat strategically. If there's a power outage, 
eat the food in your home in the order that they will start to spoil. For example, if the power has been out for no more than four hours, first eat all the food in the refrigerator, then eat all the food from the freezer, and then start eating food from your emergency supplies. That gives you a little bit more time before you have to tap into your emergency supply. Also, throw out foods that go back quickly and have been left out in room temperature for more than two hours. Before eating, look at and smell the food to make sure it didn't go bad. Never taste the food to decide whether or not it's safe. It may not taste bad, but if there's bacteria on there and it's spoiled, it'll make you sick. Again, remember to throw away canned goods that look swollen, dented, or rusty. It's also recommended to keep a manual can opener and disposable utensils near your emergency food supply. You're not going to have any electricity if something happens, like let's say what happened with Katrina. You're not going to have any electricity and you want that disposable stuff because you don't want to waste the water, the precious water you already have, the clean water, to clean out some of the other utensils. If you have disposable ones, even better, just so that way you can just throw it away. I will say this, it's good to keep some M MREs or meals ready to eat handy just in case. Um, these can be bought at Walmart or any camping store. For example, I have these uh, food emergency food ration bars. They're 2400 calories, so essentially this is good for one person for one day. Also, it would be a good idea to have pails of food. They have emergency food or um, basic six-day basic pails. Uh, at Walmart or um, I think I got this one at Gander Mountain. Um, you can always look for these and these are great things to keep. It does say it has six days worth of food. I'm going to count it as three days just to be on the safe side. I don't want to open it because it has a shelf life of about 20 years if it's sealed. If you open it then it has a shelf life of about five years uh, or the best buy date on the pouch whichever comes first. Each pouch, if it's an open pouch, it goes about a year. So, you know, this this is a great thing to, to have. You're never too prepared, so I want to make sure to have enough food and enough water. Also, this expires on the 5th of November of 2034, and that's in 17 years. I think I'm good. So, good things to have. Now, the CDC recommends that you have three days worth of food. I recommend a little more than that. I recommend also like the water six days now this isn't as important as the water the water you absolutely have to have because you can't live as long without water as you can without food I'm not gonna say it's gonna be comfortable but you can live a little longer without the food than you can with the water so definitely get the water situation under control first then go with the food next we're gonna talk about health supplies the CDC recommends that you keep a three-day supply of your medication now it's important that I say this, take your medication as prescribed and do not skip any doses in order to do this. If it's a medication that you normally take and you've been taking it long term, you usually can get a refill before you run out. You can use that to keep that supply. Now, do not save your antibiotics. Again, do not save your antibiotics. Testosterone RN actually made a great video explaining why this is a terrible idea. The link is in the description. I strongly encourage you to go see his video, go check out his channel, check out the other videos as well. I bet you're going to like it, and if you like it, subscribe. He's an awesome YouTuber. Next, keep extra medical supplies that you may need. For you diabetics, you need to keep extra lancets, testing strips, and syringes. Also, if your glucometer takes batteries, take extra batteries. Be sure to keep all this stuff together so that way you can easily grab it together and go if you need to or you know where to find them next for the elderly you need to keep extra batteries if they have hearing aids nothing's going to be more frustrating when you're already trying to figure out what to do in an emergency situation than having somebody say ha huh? what'd you say constantly keep extra batteries next we're going to talk about personal care items these include soap toothbrush toothpaste baby wipes um, glasses you might not think this is important, but here's the thing to think about. You're already in a bad situation. If the water's contaminated or anything major happens, you need to keep yourself clean. It's important to maintain proper hygiene to reduce the chances of getting sick or getting an infection. That's just going to add insult to injury there if you do. Now, 
That goes for the soap, toothbrush, and toothpaste. Baby wipes are great to clean your hands, clean surfaces, or give yourself a little towel bath. Now, you got to make sure you keep yourself clean. The glasses. I know some of you was like, huh? With the glasses. But here's something to think about. It's going to be kind of hard to keep those contacts clean for a long time if you have them. So you don't want all that gunk in your eye. If you're in a bad situation, it's better to go with the glasses than the contacts. Because once you get that bacteria in your eye and you get some kind of infection in your eye, now you got an infection and you're blind. Now we're going to talk about safety supplies. First is the first aid kits. Did you know that 44% of Americans don't have a first aid kit? That's a surprising number and kind of scary. I'm not going to go into exactly how to build a first aid kit because every first aid kit should be different. It's important to have a first aid kit that will fit your needs and fit the area that you live in. If you want a good starting point, take a look at my previous video where I talked about what should go into a first aid kit. Uh, that just kind of gives you a good idea of where to start off. Now again, that's just for my area, for my needs. But... I'll leave the link down in the description for you to be able to get to it. Next thing you need to have is some kind of emergency blanket. You can have a regular blanket, and that's perfectly fine. That'll serve its purpose. But what I suggest you get is one of these survival blankets or these emergency reflective blankets. They come in several different types. Uh, you can get an expensive one. This survival blanket 2.0 has weather protection and all that. But the thing is, is this is just as waterproof as this is and costs about five times as much. This gets about as big as a deck of cards and can fit almost anywhere where this is slightly bigger. Now, the reason why you want that is because, well, you can use it as intended. You can use it as a blanket to stay warm. And in a first aid situation, it's very useful if someone's going into shock. You know, you can wrap around and keep them warm. Next. Most people forget you can use these in an emergency shelter. In a pinch, they are waterproof. You can use it as a tarp or a lean-to or a tent and have the added advantage that because it's shiny, you can reflect heat from the campfire towards you. So if you have two of them, one's a tent or whichever one you want is a tent. The other one reflects heat from the campfire, whatever you have as a heat source towards you. Next, these work great as an insulation. If you're trapped in your car, for example, you can put the blankets up against the window and have the shiny side inwards that helps reflect your body heat back into the car. A neat thing about these blankets is it can also keep you cool. Let's say you're in a tent, sun's beating down in the tent, it gets super hot. You can put one of these on the top of the tent and that metallic surface will act as a sun shield and just reflect that sun's heat away from you. Lastly, these things work great as signaling mirrors. The reflective surface and it can be easily seen from the sky. Another thing I would suggest to put in your supply kit is a multi-tool kit or multi-purpose tool. Um, it'd be good if it has a knife, file, pliers, saw, and a screwdriver. But anything's better than nothing. I have these. It doesn't have a file on it, but it has the rest of them. And, you know, it works great. You don't have to get those super expensive ones, though. They may have more tools um, and in an emergency situation like I said you can never be too prepared so but if you want to get one of these I think this cost me ten dollars at Walmart you can get one of these and works great I also suggest that you have something to help you signal for help this may be a whistle flares signaling mirror whatever you want to use I suggest getting something that has multiple uses such as this this has uh, it's a five-in-one survival tool it has a signaling mirror it has a whistle it has a compass it also has uh, a waterproof container or uh, the compartment if you want to put any kind of waterproof matches in there. It also has a flint bar, so if you have a steel knife or anything, you can use it to create fire. Anything that you can use that has multiple purposes, best thing you can do. Now for electronics. We live in an age where everything is electronic and everything needs to be plugged in. You need to be prepared in the situation where you don't have any electricity. So first of all, you want to make sure you have flashlights. Most flashlights nowadays don't come with batteries. So you need to be sure to have batteries in them, make sure that they're working, and have extra batteries for those flashlights. Next, I suggest you have a radio. So you have some kind of update on whatever situation you're in. So if it's bad weather, you know what's going on. You know if help's coming, whatever you can do to get some information or some update on what's going on. There are many of you who use your cell phone for information, for light, for anything. If you're going to use your cell phone, 
have your charger and extra charge packs that are charged. Now again, the cell phones may not work as cell phones if things get really bad. Um, the towers might be bogged down with a whole bunch of people trying to call in or call out. So don't expect to use your cell phone for as a cell phone, but you can use it for all the other stuff that's on there. Next thing is be sure you have extra batteries. This is on top of what you need for your flashlight. Batteries for anything that else that you might need. So have a wide variety of you know, AA, AAA, 9 volt, whatever you need to do, keep extra batteries on hand. Now it comes to miscellaneous items. These are just items that didn't really fit into any, any other category. Keep cash with you. Your credit cards are worth nothing without power. And also, keep maps of your area or nearby areas. Uh, that way, if you don't have a phone for your GPS, or you don't have access to that GPS because, like I said, the towers are bogged down, you have some way to navigate in your area. Also, have some way to inform any first responders or any, any kind of EMT, paramedics, or anything like that of any kind of medical conditions you may have, whether it's a life alert bracelet or anything like that, any kind of um, form to t let them know of your allergies and any kind of serious medical conditions. Next. Have a family emergency plan. There's a form on the CDC. I'll put a link down in the description. Fill that out. Discuss it with your family. It's important to be prepared before the event and not try to figure things out as you go. Uh, the more you're prepared, the better chances of you surviving. All right, so next is pets. Now, cats and dogs typically need about a gallon every three days of water. So, But this is depending on their size and their activity. Also, the CDC recommends that you keep a three-day supply of uh, pet food, whatever your pet is. Again, six days is my recommendation, just to be on the safe side, but it's always up to y'all. The CDC also has a very useful checklist on their website for what to include in your emergency supply kit for your pets. I'll also put that link down in the description for y'all. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you to Testosterone RN for that suggestion. So guys, remember, if there's a video you want to see in the future, let me know. Write it down in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. This really helps me, especially as a new YouTuber. If you can subscribe, even better. And then if you subscribe, you'll see a little bell right next to that subscribe button. Click it. So that way you know when the, the next video comes out. I'm going to try to put out a video every Wednesday. Again, I live in the middle of nowhere, so internet's kind of crappy here. But I will try to put it out every Wednesday. If it's not out Wednesday, it'll be out Thursday. Again, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Always throw away any canned goods that look swollen, dusty, dusty or rented. Yeah, don't eat rented food. Gotta give that back.